For three decades, Robert Ritchie, better known as Kid Rock, has topped charts and packed venues. Ooh, he's kid, baby. He's kid Rock. Now he's back with a new message and a new album. We the people, and now we do reserve the right to scream, fuck you! There's nobody I'm beholden to, no record companies, no corporate interests, no nothing, and you can't cancel me. Our team embedded with Kid Rock at his ranch and on his tour to get a better understanding of how exactly he lives and how he became uncancelable. Oh, tell him all to kiss my ass. How about that? This is the life of a rock star. Kid Rock was born in 1971 to an upper middle class family outside Detroit. I think I crawled out of the womb with both middle fingers in the air. <laughs> you know, you can ask my mom, she even says, she's like, we just didn't know like what we were gonna do with Bobby, how he's ever gonna support himself. <laughs> like, you know, he's spinning on his head, his bedroom, you know, break dancing, and then he's scratching our records up on my aerobics workout turntable. And you know, just, you know, cutting felt pads out of her sewing kits, and I thought I was a complete weirdo. As a teenager, Kid Rock taught himself to rap and then to DJ. He became close with other musicians rising in the Detroit music scene at the same time, artists like Eminem and Uncle Cracker. I didn't realize I was white till I was like, you know, 19, 20 years old. Was that a shock? I thought I was a poor black boy. You did. Growing up middle upper class suburbs of Romeo, Michigan. <laughs> what do they think now, your parents? Oh, they, they couldn't be prouder. I mean, my mom, you know, why don't you make nice songs like The Last Dance? You gotta use that shit fucking suck my dick and all the other songs, and I can't play them for my friends. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's, you know, I like it. I like it when he does that. He finally broke through in the 1990s with hits like Bawadaba and Cowboy. He became the bard of Macomb County and the working people it represents. Over time, his style evolved, first as a rapper and then as a country star, and finally as a rock and roll artist. But the 2010s hits like Picture and All Summer Long took his career to new heights. Did you ever think when you were learning to break dance in your bedroom in Romeo that you'd be like the best friends with Hank Williams Jr. and living in Nashville and know everything about country music and yeah, probably thought about it at some level, probably dreamed about it, but no, I never thought it would come. Because it seems like such a different world. It seems like the yeah. polar opposite, but maybe it's not. If my goals back then were like, man, if I could afford like a new Navigator truck and get like a hot chick, that's success. Then I've made it. Well, he's definitely made it. He flies on his own planes, owns dozens of cars, including a Let's Go Brandon edition Rolls Royce. And he lives on a sprawling ranch just minutes from downtown Nashville. He gave us a tour. So we are at the double wide trailer. This is not- The trouble wide. But you're not joking, you actually live in it and have for seven years? Yeah, I love it. I mean, you could live anywhere. Why do you live here? I'm so fortunate to have what I have here, a few hundred acres. You never think, well, I should be living at the Yellowstone Club or in Manhattan or anything? I do like the Yellowstone Club, but no, in Manhattan, no. No. <laughs> no. I did that when I was, you know, 19 or something, trying to make it. And I don't want to spend my life sitting in traffic in the, the rat race of life. And no, no, that's just, did I say no? <laughs> said no. I meant to say, hell fuck no. <laughs> the ranch is Kid Rock's own world. Between writing songs and running his businesses, he spends almost all his free time improving the property. You've really built like your, your own world. Like this is, this is a world that you constructed. What are you building here? Redneck paradise. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's redneck Disney world. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's just everything I've dreamed of, and worked hard for, you know, I've saved for a rainy day through the years and I've been visioning a lot of this for 20 plus years, taking notes, writing things down, you know, learning architecture, you know, to scale rulers and interior design. So you like the double wide? Love it. A couple small amenities could be better, but other than that, it's all we need. Whoa! Grab that MP5 sitting right by the couch in there. You got an MP5 sitting by the couch? Hey, come here, you animal. Delta. Hey, Delta. Watch this. Watch this. Where's, Do they you take that gun? Oh, she'll jump right in there. Watch Delta, this. Watch, Delta. just pull that gun up. <laughs> she'll jump right off that end. I love that. This is an MP5, fully auto. Make sure we got one good in there. 
That's nice. Oh, that's nice, yeah. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Don't shoot the water fountain, no. It is a redneck paradise. Behind his shooting range, he's got a second bass pond. This one has a golf green shaped like a guitar. How many shots does Grandpa get? Oh, you got some meaty bass in there. Oh. Come on, baby. Look at that. A lot of pressure. Oh, he hit it. Okay, America's watching. Come on, baby. There it is. Close. Seeger. Oh yeah, fan gave that to me years back. Fits the car pretty good, like a rock, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> On the property is his studio, two garages, a chicken coop, a saloon, even a church, which doubles as a horse stable. This is what we call the charn. It's a church and it's a horse barn. They're at the trainers this weekend, otherwise they'd be here. I love dual purpose things. I was really into Brangelina. <laughs> But I don't think anyone's ever put a church and a horse barn together. I, you know, when I was just uh, fig figuring out a space to do a barn, you know, I've got a pretty good relationship with Jesus, I'd like to think, and just to have a spot, it was just kind of putting two things together that maybe normally wouldn't, which I really love to do. It's stuff that I look for when I antique, you know, tables that fold yep. out and do multi-purpose things. Um, I've even done it with a few songs here and there, you know, putting Warren Zevon and Leonard Skinner together. Um, so it's just, I don't know, it's just, you know, it's creative, makes my brain work, and I'm just always thinking like that. This is just remarkable. What do the horses think? The horses are doing okay. <laughs> They're a little spoiled. Just eating communion wafers every meal. That's and it. You know, they tap their hoof in the holy water. Communion wafers. By the way, there's a bar in your church. There's a bar everywhere. I, I, I get some shit for it. Do we need a fucking bar in every goddamn room? You see Kid Rock on stage and you have to wonder, how does he live in his private life? Answer, in a very tidy way. Everything on the ranch is neat, clean, and orderly. The things that drive me nuts, like symmetry. My friends will come over. If I don't have my pictures bolted down, they'll just turn them a little bit just to watch me walk around and straighten them all out. But I mean, people that don't push their chairs and when they get up from the dinner table. Yeah. Or, you know, when you got a nice glass door with some gold leafing on it and they just push the glass. Just stuff, little stuff drives me nuts. You know, I don't let it bother me at the end of the day. I just kind of crack a beer and get the Windex and wipe it off. But, you know, I'm a very anal person, like, but things clean, tidy, organized. And I've always been like that with everything. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's been pr probably not doing much right now for the American badass image I've been, <laughs> been no, selling. No, but for so it long. seems related to it. I mean, you, you like order even though even know, though i create chaos <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. wait so we're leaving the property no it's still part of the property we're just gonna i don't have the interior road system done yet the centerpiece is a version of the white house he's built on a hill overlooking the rest of nashville it's enormous love architecture and interior design I've been dreaming up for 20 years Gotta leave your mark somehow, right? <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, seven mile shot directly to downtown Nashville. It's just when we when I walked up to get this property, we got our truck stuck. Got ticks all over us, this, thick, and he goes, dude, let's get out of here. I'm like, it said views, it's just just you know, put on your big boy pants. We get to here. And I'm like, write him a check. He's put a great deal of thought and energy into all the details, very much including the bathrooms. This is one of my better ideas. It's not done yet. This is... Okay, can I just... You know how hard it is to find gold toilets? No, gold toilet's easy. Gold urinal? That's <laughs> impressive. Every man in America is like, oh, I wish I had a urinal in my house. <laughs> Zach Brown found me this bed. And then I had it all, it's like, you know, eagles stuff, but it's all like gold leafed. <laughs> Big eagle up here and pretty crazy. So Zach Brown found your bed for you? Yeah, he likes to antique too. So we found that eagle out front on top of the house too. But it was just a brass eagle and then I had a 24 karat gold plated. And well, I traded him some old gas signs for him and blah, blah, blah. So you're going from a double wide to this? <laughs> yeah, you know, with just baby steps. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you about. 
I love the bowl. You know, it gets cold in Michigan. We used to bowl a lot in the winter. You know, and really it was kind of a use of space because it was a shooting range at first. And I'm like, I've got 200 acres to shoot guns. Right. And I was like, you know, so I started researching how much footage do you need for a bowling alley? Mainly the length. And it turned out that I had the perfect space. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> We got that shit on tape. <laughs> it's the first strike I've thrown in here. <laughs> Kid Rock doesn't have a lot of time to bowl. In addition to his full-time job of being a musician on tour and designing every detail of a 200-acre property, he also runs his own nightclub in downtown Nashville. It's called Kid Rock's Big Ass Honky Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, Kid Motherfucking Rock! I come to Nashville and do a deal with my honky tonk, and the thing brings in more money that you would be flabbergasted if I told you off the record, you know, what we did our first year there. I'm like, wow. Well, I'm packing up my game, I'm gonna head out west. When you've got your own honky tonk, you can do whatever you want on stage, and Kid Rock does. I'm like, oh, 134 to my pay heart. I think it's some thick sideways. A drunk man's words are a sober man's thoughts. I own yeah. what I say. I'm yeah. not apologizing to anybody. I'm not an Oprah Winfrey fan. So that, no, I'm not either. And um, so I got drunk, and the next thing I'm on stage, like, fuck Oprah, I suck my dick sideways. Fuck Oprah Winfrey. The fucked up part is I was trying to go after uh, Kathy uh, Griffin, you know, for holding up Trump's head. Fuck Kathy Griffin. And so, but I'm so damn out of it. I'm like, fuck Kathy Lee Gifford. And like, and when it comes back on TMZ or whatever, a few weeks later, I'm like, oh man, I like Kathy Lee Gifford. We've, we've been kind of friendly throughout the years. I'm like, oh, that's where I felt like, now I feel a little bad. It's one of many moments where Kid Rock has given the finger to the world. There's nothing he enjoys more. When Twitter came out, they were like, what do you think of Twitter? I said, Twitter's fucking gay. And then it raised this whole controversy. Kid Rock said Twitter is gay. And it was in this magazine. I wrote him a letter. I was like, I'm tired of being misquoted in the press. I did not say Twitter is gay. I said Twitter is fucking gay. All right, get it right. I was born in the country. I grew up in the streets. The night we went, the scene was slightly more restrained. Tucker Carlson's in the house tonight, yo. Get one of these seats up here, comfortable. Before we left Nashville, Kid Rock took us back to his recording studio to preview a song from his new album. Honestly, you make me feel like a fucking banker. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> right? I mean, it's just so funny. By the way, how do you get I this? Didn't, I, didn't, I didn't pick your outfit today. I haven't changed my clothes since 1985, and I'm never going to. <laughs> I love it. Um, You're better at being you anyway. 100%. <laughs> the new album is called Bad Reputation. Bad Reputation, you know, yeah. for a real good time. It's like, it pretty much sums me up. It combines virtually every genre you can imagine. Rap, rock, country. In some ways, it seems like the grand finale of a music career. Fuck you! One song he likes particularly is called Never Quit. Yeah, I was going to play you fucking 50 about Turn 50, which is very tongue-in-cheek, kind of comical, but I want to play you one called Never Quit. A Celtic hip-hop song. Yeah, let that soak in. I am. It's marinating right now. And the little people came from the forest. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Leprechaun music. Braveheart. To uh, my fans, I love you dearly. To you critics, haters, and trolls, go fuck yourself. The new album is a kind of musical editorial against everything he despises. The media, the government, censorship. We the people, and all we do, reserve the right to scream, fuck you! His fans love it. God bless Kid Rock. Kid Rock's a fucking gangster. 12-year-old me had the biggest on Kid Rock. He stands for America's freedoms. So He's an American badass. Why wouldn't you like it? He commutes to his concerts on his own plane. 
American Badass is painted on the side. My name's Corey Gearman. I'm general manager for Kid Rock. We are heading to Omaha, Nebraska. It's a sold out show tonight. So what does he do to prepare for these concerts? A nap is usually part of the plan. He goes to the places where he's loved, and where he's loved most is Middle America. He's 51 now, he lives on his own ranch, he doesn't have to go anywhere, but he does, and he puts everything into it. But it makes you wonder, how much longer is he gonna do this? You're very much a product of Michigan. You and Uncle Ted, Eminem, Seeger, I mean, it's produced a lot of, a lot of pretty famous artists. Currently run by a, a character called Gretchen Whitmer. <laughs> right. I mean, would you ever run against her? Like, take over Michigan, bring it back to what it was? I'd run behind her and try to trip her up. <laughs> Would you? Oh, that's so mean. Um, no, I, I like my day job. Yeah, you know, so you're not running for office. No, not now. I mean, if, if one day I ever thought if I was bored sitting around, I really thought, you know, I could serve my country and help them out and stir things up a little bit and, and do what's right, I'd have to take a hard look at it. But, you know, for, nah. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years, I see myself on the front porch. A glass of whiskey, a cigar, and a rocking chair. My grandkids are gonna come over and walk up and say, Grandpa, what are you doing? And I'm gonna say, still rocking. Rocking on the porch with my granddaughter. Rocking, how I love to watch her play. Oh.